Okay, so starting from where we left off in the previous lesson, where I showed you all of the presets that come loaded already with RenderMan. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom libraries. So the first thing to do is come up to where it says libraries at the top here and you can see that we have a number of options. One is we can create a new library. We can add a library that we've already created say for a different project or that someone shared already with us from another department or from a freelancer and then we can also forget the current library that we already have loaded. But in this instance what I want to do is I want to create a new library so if I select that now what it wants me to do is it wants me to determine a point on my drive where I want my preset browser to be installed so in this instance this is fine so I just go ahead and select the folder I give the library a name and it wants an author and you can give it a version number and if you want to you can add a description so if I just go ahead and press create now what it does is it then creates this empty set of environment maps, lighting rigs and materials. So the nice thing about this as well is that we also still have the factory library from Pixar already loaded as well. So if I come here I can still use all these ones and if I want to jump back to my preset library that I've just created I can do so. So the advantage of this is effectively you could have a whole bunch of different libraries open say from different projects or different scenes and then just jump between them as you wish. Okay so let's start building out this library a little bit. Now I'm going to come back to the environment maps and the lighting rigs. I'm just going to start with the materials first. I've gone ahead here and I've already pre-made a material so if I select my object and I come down here and I go use existing material I want to use this one called what skull so when I assign it you can now see that it'll update inside the viewport and there we have our crazy pink skull shader that I've created earlier now what I can do is I can go ahead and save this to the material library by selecting the geometry and then coming here and then pressing this icon here and then what it wants me to do is it wants me to give my material a name And it wants me to who's the author of this material and this next bit here determines how the icon looks within the preset browser so whether it's a standard material or whether it's actually fur and then here you can add in some metadata so if you want to search for glass or metals then you can add your metadata here so I'm just going to press save so now you can see it's now gone ahead and created the material and it also renders me the icon as well so now what I'm going to do to test this out is I'm just going to hide this sensor here and then I've already got our Pixar RenderMan teapot here and so the way I can apply this shader to this new object is again simply by coming over and then right clicking and then going import and assign to selected and when I do that our teapot now becomes this crazy pink skull shader as well. So now we've gone ahead and created our first material let's create our first environment map. So coming up to this environment map category here if I come ahead and press this icon what it wants me to do is it wants me to specify an HDRI that I want to use. If I come down to my source images and then I've got this wild skull HDRI underscore ACCG and if I select it again it wants me to give it a name and then it wants me to call the author and again metadata I can add in here. So again in the same way as it makes the material it loads the HDRI and then it goes ahead and renders the icon for me. If I come down to the Pixar dome light and I right click and I go import and add to selected so now you can see it's now added it to our HDRI dome. I'm just going to turn this around come over here and make it a bit brighter And again we can hide our teapot and then show our centaur. Okay so the next thing I'm going to show you what to do is how to create your own lighting rig. I'm going to come here and I'm going to hide this dome light and then I'm going to create a Pixar rectangular light and I'm just going to make it 90 degrees and put it down the bottom and turn it up a bit brighter and I'm going to duplicate this and then create a rim light and 
like so. Give it a bit of a color. Okay. Okay, great. So now I've got this kind of weird, spooky lighting going on with him. So I'm just going to increase this bottom light a bit. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with this. What I can do is I can select both these lights and then I can then select this light rig icon and again give it a name and then press save. And in the same way as I can use my environment maps and my materials, I can share this across other projects and other DCCs. So if I just go ahead and delete these and then again, I right click and go import. You can see that it automatically puts the lights back in. So that's it for the basics of the preset browser. And I'm sure you're going to go ahead and have great fun making your own material libraries and lighting rigs and sharing them with other freelancers and departments. <laughs>